If you're using Notion as a student or as a knowledge worker, you will probably save a lot of web resources, web pages, articles, status in a Notion database. So that means you need to find a quick way to save web resources. How do you do that? Well, manually, that's a lot of work. But fortunately, there are some extensions that can help you. One of the extensions is the official Notion Web Clipper. It's working for browsers like Chrome, Safari and Firefox. If you're using a browser that is based on Chromium, like uh, Brave, that is the browser I'm currently using, um, it will work as well. In fact, the Notion Web Clipper is not the best resource you can use for that purpose. There's a bad extension, but more about that in one minute. First, I want to show you how to save a web page with the Web Clipper in Notion. So you see, if you have installed the extension, you can find it, for example, in the Chrome Web Store, then uh, the Notion logo should appear in your extensions. You click on your extension, you can alter the title, but uh, we keep the original title and then we can choose in which uh, workspace to save it. And um, yeah, in that case, it's my workspace, so we keep it. And then where in which database to save it. We have several options, but I'm going to save it in the Save to Notion database. That's the database I've created for this video. So let's save it. And yeah, now let's open the page in Notion. And yeah, we've seen, we got the title, uh, we got an URL. Um, where's the content? Ah, yeah, now the content is appearing. It needs some minutes to load. And we see that uh, the web clipper got um, fetched the image, the title image, and the whole article into Notion. Now we have saved everything in a Notion database. So let's click on the database, save to Notion, and we see here our page and the URL property. So with a click, we can later uh, go back to, to the original resource. So that's actually pretty straightforward and working really well. But in fact, there is a better extension, or at least people claim that the other extension is better. So let's have a look. So the other extension is safe to Notion. One more thing that's a bit confusing. Here in the bar, in the extension bar on Google Chrome or Brave, um, yeah, the web clipper uh, created by Notion, it's called safe to Notion. But now we have the alternative extension. The official name is Save to Notion, but here in the bar, it's called Notion Saver. That might be a bit confusing. So uh, it's called here the Notion Saver. So look uh, for the logo of the paper plane and um, you should be fine. We go back to our article about Notion database automations. And uh, yeah, let's do that again. <laughs> we click on the icon and um, now we have to sign in. Okay. Okay, we are signed in again. Well, we start by adding a form. And uh, we create the form by selecting a page or database where the things uh, got saved in. Um, yeah, we search for our saved Notion database. And it's here. And now what you see, you have different fields. You have much more options than in the Notion Web Clipper. Uh, the first one, well, it's basically the same. You can save the title, but uh, we can, for example, also say, no, no, we don't want the title. We want to have the page description or the publication date here. When we click on paragraph, we can add some more things besides just the title. We can say we want to have the title and the publication date and maybe also the URL of that post. And now all the free things will appear in the saved title. So, okay, uh, content image, we can say um, we want to save the main image, the avatar, a website icon, or a page screenshot. Let's choose the screenshot because I think that's a cool option. Content here, we have just two choices, empty or content. Yeah, I want to save or we want to fetch the content into Notion. Template, and that's a cool option because we can say that we want to uh, save the page and then upload a template um, after the saved content. So if in that database, uh, here's our template, 
I've created a simple template before Save to Notion template. It's basically just a heading, so nothing fancy. Um, but uh, yeah, it appears here, Save to Notion template, and if you click on it, it will actually be um, uploaded after the content. Maybe you have noticed before, uh, it didn't uh, show up instantly, it needed some seconds to load, so sometimes you have to wait for that. But now, yeah, we have the template here, we click on it, and you will see that it will appear after the content. Um, yeah, on the last fearless URL, I think we can keep that. Um, do we hide something? No. Okay, good. I think we are ready to go. Let's save and let's see how well it is working. Save. And yeah, save page. And here it is. We have the title. Um, we have the date and the URL. So as we have actually selected um, and the title. So in practice, uh, we should probably do it a little bit nicer, but that's just a showcase. Uh, tags we haven't used, but actually you can use them. Uh, let's go back. Um, in the tag field, you can enter the tag that should be active when it is saved into the Notion database. So when you save now, um, the content is saved and the tag will be, in that case, active. But I missed that when I first saved. And now we come to the content area. So we see the screenshot. Uh, it's not the picture we have saved, so the, um, the blog post picture, but we have we decided to save a screenshot. And here's the content. And at the end of the content, we got that comment. And that's the Notion template I've created previously. It's simply the heading for the content, uh, content for the comment. And uh, after that, we can comment the content. And that's how you actually save things into Notion with the Save to Notion extension. You see the Save to Notion extension has much more options than the official web clipper. But I have to say that the web clipper is a bit more reliable. So uh, you've noticed before, I got locked out by the Save to Notion extension and then it needed some time to um, actually load the template. Um, yeah, of course it's nice, have so many options to um, be able to uh, manipulate the things you're saving to Notion beforehand so that you don't need to do it manually later inside the database. But the question is if it's really necessary. I think, for example, for me personally, in 90 to 95% of all use cases, um, the web Clipper, the Notion Web Clipper is sufficient. Having the other options is nice, but it's not a must have, to be honest. And both extensions are free. Um, the Save to Notion extension, it has a premium option. Let's have a look what is included in the premium, uh, in the premium option. Uh, we can unlock the features uh, and it will cost $5.99 per month or 94, uh, 49 or $49.99 per year. Um, yeah, for power users, it could make sense, but I think it's not totally necessary. Uh, what is included? Well, unlimited forms. Otherwise, you just have five forms and um, forms are kind of templates, uh, public forms, uh, so that allow everyone in your workspace to access. Um, the possibility to get all images uploaded into Notion, tweet integration, Gmail integration, um, history of your saved web pages, and edit uh, selected pages of your database relation feeds. And they promise to add more features in the future. Um, yeah, for power users, that could make sense, but I would say for the majority, um, they should be pretty fine with the basic template. And that was my short tutorial about the Save to Notion extension. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, like always, feel free to ask in the comments of this video. See you next time and have a productive day. Bye bye.